Downtown San Francisco is the oldest part of the city and one of the most expensive. But having all those amenities just outside means you may not need as much space inside. My name is Bill Williams. I've lived here since 1996. A tiny loft by the side of the freeway is not everybody's idea of home, but Bill Williams loves it. He even waves to the morning commuters. This loft is 487 square feet. I like the novelty of it. It's tiny, but I don't have a lot of stuff. I don't need a lot of stuff. Uh, it's amusing enough to be able to be in San Francisco and go see live entertainment, the restaurants. All my friends have bigger houses, so I don't really need that much. Hey, Lynn, Hi, how are you good doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Bill's friend Lynn is considering a loft nearby, so he wants to show off his space to give her a few ideas. You're right in the middle of San Francisco. You can walk everywhere. Yeah. Friends come to visit. You, you don't have to drive. Yeah, it's Go right the by bars. the ballpark. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Here it is. Bill's 487 square foot open loft has lots of industrial details, but not a lot of floor space. The ceilings are really high. Yeah, it gives a feeling that it's, it's, it's larger than it really is. Yeah. So are these original beams? Yeah, redwood. Oh, how Californian. I think this is like my favorite feature. I like the, the concrete walls, the brick. It's got all these different kinds of surfaces. Can you believe how quiet it is with the, even though the, the, the freeway is right there? It's unbelievable, huh? Does that bother you? You know what? The first day when I moved here, I thought, I looked at it seriously, and I thought, oh no, is that going to drive me crazy? It doesn't bother me at all. It's like having a fishbowl, but I don't have to feed them. Watch this. Watch this. I'll open it up. OK, now I can hear it. <laughs> Living next to traffic can really just be detrimental to your lifestyle. You're not going to be able to talk on the phone clearly. You're not going to sleep well. So making the extra investment on a double window really makes sense. Bill combined his kitchen and his office into one space, but the office gets all the use. You have a nice kitchen here, too. I don't even really use it. I use it for storage uh -huh. more than anything. I like to cook, but um, you know, when you live in the city, you're going out to dinner a lot. Yeah. OK, and then these are your closets? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's tons of space. Got two of these. There's more in the bathroom. There's a wireless network here, so I can. Excellent. So you can work? Yeah. This would be good for me, because I work at home, so I could sort You of could work. finish your novel here. Yeah, perfect. I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but um, the, my bed is up there. Above the bathroom is a sleeping loft, but it's not very easy to get to. I could probably be a good fireman now because I, really? I can carry people up. Literally, I can go up a ladder in my sleep. A lot of people don't like sleeping in loft bed situations, and that's because there's a ladder to climb up. Um, you can't get down very easily in the middle of the night. Um, you might fall out of bed. So there are lots of these sort of reasons why people might not choose to do it. But if you're going to live in a really small space, it's definitely something to consider. Actually, that's one thing I like about it is because people come over and they don't have to see my um, unmade bed. When somebody walks into this loft, they don't even see my bed. So for them, this could be an office space. There's so many choices for real estate, but if it meets your needs, that's... That's a smaller sort of space, but that's all you need, because how often are you really home anyway when you're living in the city? It's all about the location. Yeah. Location, location, location. Yeah. yeah. Next, an architect's multifunctional retreat in Oakland. I was really excited to experiment with color. 